Hello and welcome back to the Leia High Plan Show. So joining me today is a man who some might call the real life Bruce Wayne. He helps men attain that Hollywood muscular physique and he has six best-selling fitness programs called Kino Body. Now, before I bring him on the show, please don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe if you like this kind of content because I'm going to be making a lot more of it. Gregor Gallagher, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great. I just uh, flew into Miami last night. I'm excited to be here. I've been checking out your stuff. You're freaking blowing up. It's insane. Thank you so much. Well, yeah. it's so good to have you here. I feel like Miami suits you. You've already got a bit of a tan going on. It, uh, Miami suits me well. I love it here. Um, I first came out here like last year for like a few months and it's just like, it's heaven. It's like leaving Canada feels great. Yeah. Absolutely. Canada is, is a, it's not a great place actually, but we'll get into all yeah. of that. We'll get into all those restrictions in a bit, but I've been following a lot of your content. You talk about, um, you know, male self-improvement, fitness, men's testosterone, and we're going to get into all of that. But one thing that I have noticed is this comparison to Batman and Bruce Wayne. So I want to try and understand like, mm. where did that come from? And have you had some kind of like Batman transformation? So, okay. This like started when I was six years old. Okay. Oh, wow. I had like a Batman action figure and I asked my dad, I'm like, Hey, like, can I ever look like this? I wanted to have that strength and power. And that's when I first realized my father told me, he's like, yeah, you can, you just got to work out and eat right. And that was like when the seed was planted, we all have this amazing gift. We have the power to train, to eat right, to gain muscle, to feel better, to be healthier. And so few of us really take advantage of that. And so that that's where the seed planted. And then years and years later, there wasn't really a fitness approach that inspired me. There was working out for um, like different sports for athletes. There was weight loss. There was, you know, CrossFit. And then there was, of course, like bodybuilding, but nothing really spoke to me. So I kind of felt disenfranchised. And the realization was like, you know, you watch a movie with Brad Pitt and Troy, or you see Christian Bale get ready for Batman. It's like, that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want to look like the movie star and have that strength and power. And as opposed to just being a bodybuilder and putting on tons of size and, you know, being 220 pounds, I wanted that movie star look. Yeah, it's such an interesting thing because a lot of people are always trying to get that bodybuilder shape. Mm -hmm. And I don't think many people like that other no. than that particular niche. Um, so I want to understand how all of this started. But before we do, you, you had this marketing degree, you, you were in university, and I heard mm -hmm. you say, um, oh, I, I read that it was useless. Like those were your words, you said it was useless. So how did you get into fitness and content and social media? Take me back to the very beginning. Yeah, so I went to university when I was 18 years old in Canada and I did a marketing management program. And initially I kind of was on the fence about school. I didn't really, it didn't really seem like the path for me to become very, very successful. Um, but I just did it anyway. I'm like, you know what, let's give it a shot. And I went to class and I just never really felt inspired. The thing about me is for me to like really like access my highest level of intelligence, I have to feel very incentivized. Mm -hmm. And in school, I never felt that incentive. You know, parents and people will tell you, you need the degree, you need the degree. I'm like, why? Mm. If I'm gonna start a business, why do I need the degree? So it's more about like the degree, the piece of paper than the actual education. I want to get the absolute best education to achieve my goals. And I never once really felt like that resided within university. I felt like, you know, in 2009, 2010, even years prior, so much was happening on the internet. I could learn pretty much everything I needed to learn on the internet. And also um, the world was changing so fast as far as social media and blogging and, and building websites, everything was changing so fast, the university couldn't keep up. So I'm like, you know what? I am gonna, you know, kind of go my own direction, understand all, this diff all these different marketing things online and really figure it out. But funny enough, all of the marketing that I've learned has been more or less common sense for me. Mm. It has been, what do I, like what would work on me? What do I think is cool? And when you actually focus on not like what's gonna sell a customer, what would I actually want? What would yeah. excite and inspire me? That's when you can really access like your highest level, like genius, when you're really thinking about like, what is gonna make me excited? Um, and I, I can't tell you how happy I was to just, leave school behind at 18, 19 years old. Being in class and learning stuff and like, you know, 80, 90% of it, like you're just doing to get your marks and to get your piece of paper. You're not actually like, oh my God, that's amazing. Look at what, like, right. you know, and doing exams, just uh, it's so much more fun to actually build something and spend, spend years and years in school. Were you like terrified to drop out? 
Did you uh, have any doubt? Or you no, just like I, I had zero doubt. I had okay. zero. I was, I was so happy to drop out. It's funny. Like I had this very, very absolute strong sense of certainty in myself and confidence. Almost looking back, I'm like, was there a little bit of delusion there? But there was like zero doubt in my mind. I was absolutely dialed in. I saw the path. Now, initially my goal wasn't to make a ton of money and build a massive business. My goal was to A, do what I love and like support myself and have freedom. And if I did all those three, that was a win for me. Um, and then things end up becoming a lot bigger than I actually expected. Oh, wow. Yeah. You need that level of delusion. That's what, I, that's what I'm hearing. And people often laugh at people for being delusional, but I think that's the only way you're ever gonna get anywhere. Yeah, and you know what, it was It was like some level of delusion, but it, I wasn't telling myself, oh, I'm gonna build a $100 million company right. with nothing to show for it. Because I see some people kind of have like a little bit, they, they, they have these insane, crazy goals and there's really no path for them to get there. It's better to like set like that first strong, powerful goal you can get to, um, but then have like, have a bit of delusion in and of that. And so, yeah, for me, it was like, well, you know what? Like, I know, like, I know I can build like a, a six figure business. That's no question about it. And then once you get to that level, then you go for the next, the next, the next. And that's kind of where I find I get the most motivated and I find that my self belief really, really kicks in. And a lot of the stuff that you talk about is men's testosterone. Yeah. So I want to get, I want to get into that. I want to understand, you know, cause it's a really hot topic online mm -hmm. and it's a hot topic in society in general. And I want to understand what is testosterone and why is it important for a man? Yeah. And before, before you answer, Andrew Tate said, when I interviewed mm -hmm. him, he said that it's a man's superpower. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really interesting way to explain it. So what is men's testosterone and why is it important? Yes, yeah, so testosterone is essentially men and women both have testosterone, but the uh, like the a man has ten times more testosterone uh, than a female, and it's really your androgenic hormone. It powers muscle building. All of the characteristics that are associated with being a man and masculine are really built off of testosterone, and men having ten times more than females. So our ability to put on muscle, um, our higher levels of ambition, um, et cetera, et cetera, and crazy enough, right? Right, crazy enough, uh, males' testosterone levels are a lot lower now than they mm. were even in 1999. In the 80s, they're dropping, and it's very, very alarming. And we're not even seeing a downturn. We're not even seeing a plateau. Like it's been dropping steadily without any plateau. So, who knows where it's going to be in another 10, 20, 30 um, years? But you know, as a man, like one of the one of the things that happens as you go through puberty, you get this increase in testosterone. You put on more muscle. You get a deeper voice, et cetera, et cetera. And, uh, and it's a scary thing for men to lose their testosterone because it's not just like that element of masculinity. It's also important as a man for confidence, um, for, you know, anxiety, depression, when testosterone levels are low, you see higher like increases in anxiety and depression. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty important. Um, and even testosterone in men can help keep you calm under stressful situations. Mm. That's actually a sign of having higher testosterone is that when shit is essentially hitting the fan, you can actually remain cool. Whereas, you know, if your testosterone levels are lower, you can be more reactive. And it's also kind of, it actually um, relates to, for example, police officers that are trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat actually get into less <clears throat> uh, physical acts of, you know, like less physical situations than those that are not trained. For example, because when you're trained in martial arts and then someone's in your face, you can remain calm because you know what to do. You know how to handle the situation. Whereas if you don't have that confidence, you're more likely to use excessive force or to react um, incorrectly. And so same thing, when you have higher testosterone, there's a certain confidence that you have under very uh, stressful situations. So why is it declining? And um, why is that a bad thing? And then also, mm -hmm. Here, actually answer those and then I'll ask my third question. So there's not like a 1000% clear cut reason why uh, it's declining. Like no one has the 100% crystal ball. Here is exactly why it's declining. Um, there are certain factors that come into play. Um, so one of them is as humans and as people become less active and gain body fat, we see a drop in testosterone. So for example, um, a guy that has, you know, a 40 inch waist, on average is gonna have much lower testosterone than a guy with a 32 inch waist. Your waistline is inversely correlated with testosterone. Now that is one aspect, but even controlling for body fat, we are still seeing a massive drop in testosterone. And so there's other aspects at play. 
Um, one of them is, you know, right now people are probably watching this and they probably have like, they're watching this on the computer. They probably have their phone in their pocket. Okay. Okay. Uh, and that's going to emit radiation that the more, the more time you have your phone in your pocket, mine's in my pocket right now, but I'm in airplane mode. Uh, the, the more exposure of radiation wow. close to your, you know, family jewels, the lower your testosterone levels are. Um, we're also seeing higher amounts of, uh, uh, estrogens in, in plastic, like we're basically those estrogens in plastics. Um, we're seeing phthalates, different compounds that are making their way into food. There's all of these different endo endocrine disrupting chemicals that we're exposing to that were in a much lesser extent decades and decades ago. So we have more of these hormone disrupting chemicals um, coming into our body, and then that can disrupt your body's own ability to produce testosterone. And I'm seeing it because I have, you know, I have family members, friends, and they'll go get their blood work done and they'll show me their numbers. I have many different people that um, send me their blood work, especially before they, you know, uh, take my mojo. And it is, it is, we're seeing like pretty, like they're pretty low, these levels. Um, so for example, like, you know, in the eighties, it was normal for a guy to be around seven, 800 uh, testosterone nanograms per deciliter. Now, a lot of guys that get checked, they're kind of in the 400s, you know, maybe 500s. Um, and then some of the guys that have, maybe they're in seven, 800s, uh, they get their free checked and their free testosterone is not even that high because most of their testosterone is bound up and they're not able to actually utilize as much of the free. Um, so it's pretty, it's pretty alarming. Correct me if I'm wrong. I, I saw that doctors have now lowered the standard of what's okay and what's normal. So if a man, so what, what would be, what would re, what would be regarded as low mm -hmm. testosterone back in the sixties is now regarded as normal. Right, right. It, it's that. And also like the thing is, is that if you're a 25 year old, even a 35 year old, they are putting you in the same category as a 75, 80 year old. Oh, wow. So you could, you know, if you're 25 and your testosterone levels checked and they're 380, 390, the doctor will say you're perfectly healthy. Yeah. Whereas if you're a 75 year old and you're 380, 390, it's the same thing. So there should be some separation between, you know, men that are, you know, in their twenties and thirties and men that are in their sixties and seventies. As a man, if you're 25, 30 and your testosterone levels are 400, 380, that's not where you want to be. Sure. You know, the doctor will tell you you're fine, you know, mm. should not a big issue, but if you're trying to be absolutely as optimal as possible, you're not going to be performing. Be, you're not going to be performing at the highest level at those levels. So, how do you increase your testosterone? So, there's different ways you can increase uh, your body's ability to produce testosterone. Um, now, you know it's important to mention that some people can damage their body very badly where they can't actually get it up. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, so um, for example, you know I had a friend that had a really really bad concussion, um, and his body stopped producing testosterone. Wow. Um, and so his levels were really low, like sub 300, 200. And he, he definitely tried to kind of get it up. Um, now that's not no, like, that's not normal that you just get a concussion, your body shuts down, but it can happen. Um, another guy I know was an athlete as a teenager and his, his coach had them, all the kids pumping steroids at 14, 15, when wow. your body's just developing and that can crush your body's ability to produce testosterone. So he can't eat. So he's had a very, very hard time getting his, uh, getting his levels up and he's actually on TRT. So, you know, if we avoid like those extreme cases, which are, you know, more of an anomaly, mm -hmm. um, there's certain ways you can get your body's testosterone up. Um, of course, the first thing you have to do is get good sleep. Sleep is very, very important. Vitamin D, um, lifting, lifting is very, very important to do, you know, a few days a week. Um, and you know, if you're doing tons and tons of cardio marathon running, not as good. Uh, I know some guys love biking and cycling, but that, but like it's been shown that when you're biking for mm -hmm. hours a day, it actually reduces your testosterone, lowers your sperm count, higher rates of erectile dysfunction because wow. of the pressure. Um, yep. So that definitely uh, is not as good, but intense, intense uh, lifting, sprinting, some brisk walking is like the key exercise uh, for your body to produce more testosterone um, as well, like nutrition um, and maintaining a, a lean body. Uh, getting in the right amount of minerals like zinc, magnesium, boron, very, very important. Um, and as well, there are certain things like there's certain things you can do to increase testosterone. There's also, also certain things that can hurt your body, your body's ability to produce testosterone. So wearing a lot of cologne, a lot of scented products, that's the bad? body wash. Yeah. Oh, wow. You're literally 
you're literally putting inside your skin because your skin is the large, largest organ on your body and it absorbs everything you put in it. You're literally putting in endocrine disruptors into your body. Is that the same for men and women? Like, so wait, so you never yeah. wear aftershave? You think that's bad? Uh, I don't wear it. And so even here's the funny thing for a woman, if they're exposed to too many phthalates. Um, What's that? It's like a, it's a chemical that's sort of used to like prolong a scent. So okay. if you have like, you have like a body wash, you have like some scented detergent, in order for the scent to not just go away after 20, 30 minutes, they use phthalates to sort of extend the scent. Okay. Um, but so here's the unfortunate thing. Let's say a woman's wearing lots of that stuff. Yeah, sure, maybe it's not gonna affect you because you're not gonna, like testosterone might not be as important to have at that higher level. Um, that said, y if you're pregnant and your baby gets exposed to too many phthalates, um, mm -hmm. it's associated with being born with a much smaller penis. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, so, wow, I won't do that to my son. Yeah, you gotta be careful. You gotta <laughs> but be I'm careful. pregnant, no wine and no perfume. Yeah, Damn. exactly. So, uh, but it's in everything. And a lot of people just are loading on body wash every single day, all of these very strong chemicals. And I don't I don't wear any, any, any sort of artificial ingredients, artificial fragrances. Um, so what do you wear like to freshen or like uh, nothing? I shower and I have like some sort of like natural uh, deodorant. And uh, if you take care of your health. You should naturally smell good, right? You should naturally yeah. smell like, you know, good. So the idea that you have to like put on, you know, lots of cologne all the time is, is not a, it's, it's not a good sign. That's interesting. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's interesting. I do know people who do just and you, smell and you know naturally. What, and you know what's good. funny? Like if you're really, really attracted to someone, they smell um, amazing. They anyway. smell amazing. Like their yeah. natural scent is 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 like the most amazing. Um, not like you know. So that's that's sort of my recommendation. Um, but the absolute worst culprit, even if you want to wear a bit of cologne, or even if you want to have like a certain deodorant that you like, the worst culprit is going to be like the body wash. Mm. The body wash you're rubbing all into your skin. At least use something natural there, um, as well as a lot of the certain laundry detergents that are scented. Um, have the highest load of phthalates. So those two are the simplest to cut out. And then also like, you know, I, I see some people that wear just so much perfume, so much cologne. It's like, like relax, okay? I have perfume I, on right now. I'm no, no, like, I, no, no, it's, it's perfect. Okay, I honestly, it's I, no, no, from here I can't even smell it. Like, okay, no, it's subtle. No, 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 okay. it's subtle. No, no, yours is- I feel is, like I'm no, gonna get ill and I am- No, no, yours is perfect. Don't worry, okay. don't worry. I, you know, it's very, very subtle. Like you, you know the perfect amount, but some people walk into a room and oh, it's, it's you 15, yeah, 15 feet away. Yeah. yeah, I hate that. I was actually at dinner in Toronto with a you know a buddy that works for me, and then we we're at dinner. There's a couple, like, there's like a couple over there, and we were like trying to enjoy our wine you and steak, and I was like, I'm, I'm tasting this freaking their scent, like easy. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. know that's crazy. But most people don't know that it's actually not great for you. I didn't know that. Yeah. Can you ever have too much testosterone? Like I've heard it can cause hair loss. I've also heard this isn't really testosterone, but I heard the, the DHT. myth. Well, no, I was gonna say like um. If you lift weights when you're young, that can like stunt your growth. Like right. there's all these myths. So right, got it. Yeah. Okay, yes, let's focus on uh, the first one, right? Um, so can you have too much testosterone? I've rarely ever seen anyone that naturally had too much testosterone. It is really, really, really hard. I have yet to see someone that naturally had has too much testosterone. Now what you will see is guys that go on anabolics, steroids, and they take, you know, uh, you know, they take bodybuilding doses they are short in their lifespan and they're, getting, and they're causing tons and tons of issues and hair loss, acne, those are more superficial, but they literally are accelerating aging. You see guys that shoot up lots of steroids in their 20s, by the time they're my age, by the time they're 31, they look like they're 45. You look young for 31, Thank by you. the way. Thank you, you look more like 28. Okay, thank yeah. you. Three years, okay. Yeah, yeah. No, but uh, no, no, but, it, yeah. but that's good because that will that will get longer. It will get longer. Will, that 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 it, gap will stretch it will as get, you get older. Yeah, but I haven't I haven't seen one single person that d was not on any drugs who's like testosterone was too high. Um, for a guy to have very high testosterone, uh, it would probably be like twelve hundred nanograms per deciliter as the total, and free would be you know high twenties, and and that that is like. If, if you're in that level naturally, um, you're gonna like be feeling pretty good. Now, when you take anabolic steroids and you're taking high, high amounts, then you see some of that, those uh, side effects where you have uh, mood swings, maybe you have this heightened temper, you're more reactive. Um, that's when things can get really, really messy when you're pumping in way too much, but then like a bunch of cascading effects happen when you're putting in synthetic testosterone in your body in very high amounts then different hormones get out of whack, estrogen shoots up, and you see even guys that get 
little I've fat deposits in their, in their nipples because their whole body is having this uh, cascading, you know, certain effects. So that that's TRT? Um, TR, so oh, TR, no. TRT is more like sublimated for men whose levels are very low. And then they, they try and take TRT to kind of get to like where they should be naturally or the higher end of natural. That would be uh, men that are taking like legit bodybuilding doses. Um, if you see some of these guys that are getting exposed recently for their, for their different doses, a lot of times- Liver King, him. Hey, Liver King, a lot of times, and funny enough, his, his testosterone dose was apparently wasn't that high, but a lot of times these guys are combining many different compounds. It's not just they're taking testosterone, they're taking many different types of steroids, insulin, and then it just, the list goes on and that's, and we're seeing it, you know? There was like this idea that was trying to, that was, people were trying to put out like a decade or two ago, like, oh, like, you know, steroids are completely safe. It's one of the safest things, you know, uh, that, that you can do. No one's dying from it. And uh, we're seeing massive amounts of, wow. of, you're seeing, in bodybuilding, you're seeing a lot of deaths, a lot of issues. And yeah. are they all taking steroids to, to, to um, look like that, to look that rich? Yeah, so for example, for me, for example, I'm 5'10", uh, 178 pounds. The natural limit for how big someone can be without using anabolics is not that much, right? If if I was 10 pounds bigger of muscle, same leanness, it would be very hard to achieve that naturally. Now, if we're talking about someone that has 30 more pounds of muscle, there is 0% chance they're not on anything. Absolutely zero. Um, the thing is, is that to be lean, to have abs and definition veins, and to carry a lot of muscle, it's very hard to do. Our bodies aren't really wired for it. You can like the, the ongoing joke, joke in fitness is that you can either be very lean mm -hmm. or you can be big. Uh, there's, there's three things. You can be natural, lean, or big. Oh, okay. you, you gotta pick two. So you can be big and natural, lean and natural, but you can't be like just, you know, you 200 just pounds shredded. Um, you know, unless you're like six three, then you'd be two hundred pounds shredded. But like, you can't, you can't do all three. So, what are you natural and lean? I'm natural, oh, lean. You're, oh, you're I try. And, big. You're I not mean, small, see, obviously. see, like to like women and like everyday people, they'd be like, oh shit, you're big. Yeah. But in the bodybuilding standards, they would be like, no, no, he's small. Yeah. Uh, but that know? was your goal, right? You That's wanted, my, like, you wanted like the normal yeah, physique. You yeah. Wanted to, yeah. That that was my goal. I always, you know, I always was more drawn to like having that sort of movie star look, Christian Bale, the leanness, the GQ look than this whole idea of just trying to put on uh, a bunch of size. There's a certain insecurity, right? That oftentimes, I'm not saying in all cases, but pretty much the mass majority of them, there's a certain insecurity to get that big and sacrifice your health in the process and make it, yeah, you're right. make it entire life. Like, I mean, I have a friend that is a documentary filmmaker and he's done uh, stuff with some of these bodybuilders. And you know, when you peel back the layers and get down to it, it usually starts with a very big insecurity. Yeah, you're completely right. I know yeah. someone, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get into a whole story, but I know somebody who used to be very small as a kid, and mm -hmm. that wasn't good enough. And then he he did all that stuff, and yeah, it wasn't good. And you know so. what? If if that's if that's how you feel when you're younger, totally understand. Um, that's kind of normal if you feel like you're bullied and you you want to kind of build up this muscle and strength. I would say do some boxing, do some jujitsu, mm. and put on a nice natural amount of muscle. Don't go down this 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 sort of rabbit hole to like try and be on a bunch of drugs, be that big guy that's kind of puffy. Um, because in the end, if you can't even know if you don't even know how to throw a punch, you're not going to be that effective anyway. So learn how to kind of learn some basics in boxing, wrestling, or jujitsu, and put on a natural amount of muscle, and uh, you'll feel much better. But the thing is, and this is why mindset is actually so important in, in fitness and in life in general, is because if you don't evolve, you will still always see yourself as that small person. Mm. There are guys that are massive, that are 240 pounds, that still feel like, they look in the mirror, they think they're tiny, they're small, yeah. and they're insecure. My arms are tiny, and, and it's a very, very bad place to be. Yeah, I've seen it. Like, yeah. I, 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 I can know, I'm like, have these people in my head, and I'm like, yeah. Like, I know somebody, I said to him, you're too big, and he's like, no, I have to get bigger, and I'm like, don't like you look weird like don't yeah, do it yeah it's it's ridiculous but yeah. you're known for this you know hollywood celebrity physique mm. you mentioned christian bale so how do you get that is it diet is it exercise is it supplements i know obviously you have the keno mm. supplements so how, how do you get it diet exercise su supplements what is it so one of the things i did in fitness when i really started to percolate in the industry is i basically simplified everything anyone watching if you've stayed you paid attention to the fitness scene 
a lot of people feel like this is so complicated, okay? I don't get it. Like fat loss is X, Y, Z. I had to do all these different workouts. Some people are telling me, don't eat carbs, eat carbs, eat once a day, eat five times a day. Everyone's made it so complicated. Ultimately, to have a great physique, you need two things. Okay. You need to have like a good amount of muscle in the right proportion, and you need, and you need to have a low level of body fat. So that's the first thing to understand, okay? That's what a, build, a great physique is. It's a good amount of muscle with low levels of body fat. Okay, so how do we actually achieve the muscle? Muscle is simply, is, is nothing more than a byproduct of strength. The reason why someone has a good amount of muscle is because they're strong. And so the focus with training needs to be on increasing strength. There's a lot of confusion in, 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 in training, but ultimately what we do know without a shred of doubt is that we wanna be lifting heavier weights over time, okay? Um, and funny enough, a lot of people don't even emphasize this. They, they have these five day, six day a week routines, two hours in the gym, just doing lots and lots of reps and they plateau. In order to build muscle, we must get stronger, okay? Um, and so I actually find lifting three days a week, and right now I'm only doing twice, but when I lift three days a week, very, very focused, push hard, I'm better able to produce strength gains as a natural than being in the gym all the time. So the first thing is you wanna get stronger on key lifts. For example, you wanna build your chest, you know, incline bench, flat bench press. You want to build a bigger back, biceps, weighted chin ups, shoulder press, etc. Um, squats, deadlifts, or Bulgarian split squats, Romanian deadlifts. If you get stronger on the key movements for your physique, um, you will gain muscle. Now, as far as leanness is concerned, fat loss is nothing more than essentially calorie deficit um, while maintaining muscle. So, correct amount of protein and be in a calorie deficit, and your body will strip off fat. Now, you can do that eating six times a day. You can eat it. Do that eating twice a day. You can have carbs, eat less carbs. It's really up to you. My sort of thesis on fitness was that the key to getting lean is to make eating at a caloric deficit as easy as possible. Once I created that lens, that's when fat loss became easy. Oh, wow. How do I, yeah, if I am burning 2,700 calories a day as a man, moderately active, how do I make eating 2,200, 2,300, as easy as possible, I can do it every day. Because I was not the person that like fat loss was easy. I love eating, I can eat more than anyone. I go out to dinner, I could eat two dinners. I love cookies, I love it all, <laughs> okay? Some people just like, oh, I don't need dessert. I love it all, yeah. okay? Steak, potatoes, cookies, dessert. And so me cutting back on food, has never been easy. Even my father, was like loved, you know, he would eat everything. Like he had a big appetite. Mm. Um, so for me, it was like, how do I actually make this something I can stick to? And that's when I created my little little different meal plan and strategies to make being in a deficit as easy as possible. Now, this is like one of the most important things because there are lots of people that work out, they go to the gym, they have some muscle, but it's covered in a layer of body fat. Mm. And when you see some of these guys on the movie screen, not all of them are massive. Like Brad Pitt, the reason he looks so good is he's got some muscle, but he's got a very low body fat. And that's when his jawline pops and his abs are just chiseled. Your physique changes when you get to like the top level of leanness, right? And you don't wanna get too lean. If you get too lean, there can be dro drops in testosterone because your <clears throat> body's wired for survival. But if you get to like eight to 10%, your body changes. Your shoulders become more sculpted. Your waist becomes more taut and you get that more of that sleek proportion. Your chest appears more like a plate of armor, less droopy. Um, so when you get lean, that's when you really separate from the pack. That's when you stand out. And that was my focus in fitness. A lot of guys that work out, they have some muscle, but how do we separate from the pack? The movie actors, they're separating from the pack. There's a reason why if uh, a studio is gonna risk hundreds of millions of dollars on a movie, they're picking the guy that has that lean chisel physique, not that sort of big, puffier guy. Mm -hmm. What about with women? Cause I know it's, I, I mean, I think it's harder for women to lose fat. Like we hold fat more. Mm. Um, and then, so yeah, what about fat with women? And then also, is it the same with building muscle? Like you have right. to just keep increasing the weight. You can't just keep it at a, at a, at a, right. Yeah. Um, okay. So one, so the reason fat loss is harder for women is, um, women on average are smaller, right? the smaller you are, the less calories you're gonna burn. So women naturally don't burn as much. If, if a woman's maintenance calories is, eight, is 1,800, for her to lose a pound a week, it's only like 1,300 calories. Whereas a guy that's bigger and, and, and moderately active, 
his maintenance might be 3,000. He might be able to lose a pound a week on 2,500. And so the more calories you burn every day, the smaller percentage uh, of, a, like of, of a deficit you need to lose that pound of fat a week. So women have it harder um, in that sense. And they're also more sensitive to being in a calorie deficit. So uh, yes. obviously for, for women, like reproduction is very, very important. And so if you're in too much of a calorie deficit for too long, uh, you, your hormones can get out of whack. You might not even be able to get pregnant. And so women, when they're in too much of a deficit, uh, it feels harder. It's more mm -hmm. uncomfortable. Whereas a guy can tend, can uh, handle it a little bit better. Um, so for women, that is harder. The same thing holds true though. Like for a woman to lose body fat, they need to be in a calorie deficit. It's just harder and it's easier to screw up because if a guy eats an extra 500 calories, okay, maybe he's at maintenance now. Like, you know, for, but for a girl, like a few hundred more calories can just throw her off. Yeah. And then, you know, one bad day of eating a week for a woman could undo the entire week. Can That's even put so them true. in a surplus. Yeah. So, <laughs> so, so for women, like the thing is, is like, you just have to be very, very consistent and there's not much wiggle room. Mm. There's not much room to mess up on the weekend. I haven't seen very many women that were able to like be strict Monday to Friday and then just go balls to the walls on the weekend and lean down. That doesn't really work for women. Yeah, no, that's, that's true. I can speak yeah. from experience. Yeah. yeah, if I like, especially in America, the food here is insane. I know, and that's the problem as a woman, like you're going out for dinner and you're getting the same portion as a six foot, 200 pound man. You know, so you have, it, it, it's a, it, you have to be a little more careful and it can be a little trickier to really nail down. So I want to talk about, um, specific, the specific parts of a man's body. Mm -hmm. So I think the most attractive thing if, is if a man has a wide frame, so big shoulders, deltoids, whatever it is. So what are some of, and I know a lot of women find, it, find this attractive mm -hmm. too, like that big wider frame. So what are the, some of the key exercises that a man can do to make his deltoids bigger and just have like a wider frame generally? Y yeah, and so I also preface and say that one, we have like different research on universal attraction, um, what women are most attracted to in a man and like top of the list universally across the globe, different cultures is the shoulder to waist ratio. Yeah. Okay, so when you have broader shoulders, more of a taut waist, that's a sign of health. Um, and that's a sign of like physical performance. So that is something you wanna optimize for. Now, we're seeing new research that's actually showing that there's a clear cut link between a man's waist to shoulder ratio and the woman's satisfaction in the bedroom. Interesting. Yeah, and so like the number one thing, okay, Based on this research I saw, and also Derek Moore Place was sharing this, but uh, the number one sign that a woman was like fully satisfied in the bedroom, okay? And there's a lot of things that they could test and it was the shoulder to waist ratio. Wow. Interesting. That is. Yeah, yeah. Why is that? Um, well, I'm not, I can't speak for a woman per se. I just imagine that, uh, that, uh, the re like the reason <laughs> is again like when a woman is more track uh, when a woman is, let's ask you actually Me? why do you think that is why do I think what is why do you think the shoulder to waist ratio makes uh, by and large women uh, more satisfied in the bedroom I I don't know I can't give you like the science but I, I can I can understand it if he if he has like if he has a smaller waist and a broader shoulders i guess it means he's extremely fit he's muscly he's healthy he's strong so he's everything about him he's just going to perform better he's going to be stronger everything is going to be stronger and healthier and better as opposed to a man now, who's got a little bit of extra body fat or yeah. skinny weak i guess it's it as uh, you know i can't speak um as you know the, the woman will have to speak to this but you yeah, know it's very very interesting research and i, I mean it you know it, it definitely makes sense um for a woman, obviously, if it's gonna be a more exciting experience if the guy's in top shape. If, you know, Brad Pitt and Troy is, you know, in the bedroom with you, it's gonna be a lot better than if, uh, you know, Jonah yeah. Hill is, is. <laughs> so, I mean, those are. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. <laughs> Sorry, Jonah. So we'll get you on the Movie Star Body Program. Yeah, you should, um, yeah. But that, that's, see, that's an extreme example and, yeah. and your reaction made it clear cut. Yeah, um, I'm good. Yeah, no. <laughs> so or, or Steven or Seth Rogen, you know, mm. whatever. Um, Don't know, it doesn't matter how much money they have. Yeah. Yeah. So no. that is a good. <laughs> that's a very good. Like that. Like, see, if I, you know, for the men listening, that's exciting news. Shit. Yeah. I can if I just build the shoulder waist ratio, 
that's going to be way more exciting for the woman that I'm in love with. Yeah, that's beautiful. You know, and it's honestly, it's, so it's not even that hard to do. Um, simplest thing to do to build your shoulder waist ratio is one, if you have excess body fat, tighten up the calories, 500 calorie deficit, um, and start to lean up. I like to do a fast every day. If this is how I, I have a big appetite. This is how I stay in a deficit. I fast every day. I eat a light meal around, you know, lunchtime and then a big dinner feast. And then I have, because like I, I, I have like a bit of a sweet tooth. I have my last 400 calories of whatever I want. Nice. It could be Oreos. It could be chocolate, Ooh. whatever I want. Yeah. So I'll finish like 1900 or like 2000 calories a day of whole food. And then the last 400 is whatever I want. Every, this isn't once a week. This isn't twice a week. This is every day. Wow. What did you have last night? Uh, last night I actually was staying in Ball Harbor at the St. Regis and they had like this, the mini bar had some cookies. Oh, wow. So I, had, I had some, I had some, they were good. Like the mini bar cookies hit different. Yeah. So I had some, I had some, uh, cookies. Um, but so that is the most important. Like you must get like, if you have excess body fat, you must get lean. Jonah Hill, you must nail that deficit. Probably got to get on at least 2000 calories a day. Max. He needs to hit you up. Get the 10k <laughs> steps in. I will get you lean. Uh, and then secondly, if I want to simplify the shoulder to waist mm. ratio as simple as possible, weighted pull-ups. If you want to start with body weight, that's fine too. Get strong on weighted pull-ups. I have thousands of men that have built up to doing literally 90 pound weighted pull-ups for five reps, 90 pounds attached, which is insane. Um, shoulder presses, you can do seated dumbbell shoulder presses, getting very strong. I have tons of men that have built up to doing like 80, 90, 100 pounds. People don't realize how strong they can get when they train the right way. But if you just get stronger on shoulder presses and weighted pull-ups, you will build a wider back, bigger shoulders, and you'll start to have a bit more of that movie star physique. You do not need to complicate fitness. Like, yes, you can follow a full structured routine and that's the best bet. But even if you're like at home, you got a pull-up bar, you got some dumbbells, do some pull-ups, do some shoulder presses, do a little fasting, be in the right deficit, and you your shoulders and back will start to like pop out and you'll get leaner and you'll start to carve out that V-shape. I actually, did so many, like I got so focused on weighted pull-ups, I had to stop doing them because my back would get too wide. Wow, can your back ever be too wide? So like for me, I find it's hard for me to like get my biceps too big. I find they're a little bit stubborn, um, but my back just, like when I do weighted pull-ups, my back grows like a weed. Wow. Like, and I, and I, I'm like, I'm like a 42 usually, and I, I wanna stay a 42. If I start, if I go too hard, I'm just gonna be like, it's just gonna look, it's just gonna be too wide. Mm -hmm. So it's very easy, That's actually. That's a great problem to have. It's a great problem to have. <laughs> it's amazing. It's actually, if you just get strong on weighted pull-ups, okay, even do them once a week, three sets, get strong on weighted pull-ups, build up to 50 pounds, 60 pounds, etc. I got up to doing like 120 pounds for four or five reps, um, and I had to chill. If you just get strong on weighted pull-ups, you can get your back as big as you want. That's fascinating. That's a great problem to have. Yeah. yeah. So with all of this in mind, um, I want to talk about male depression. Mm -hmm. um, because I saw a statistic the other day, which said that male suicide in the UK is three times higher than that of female. I don't know what it is here. And I imagine it's pretty similar globally. So I want your take on that. Do you think male depression is real or should a man just push through and man up as they say? Yeah, no, that's a very, very good question. Um, I, I think there's really two sides of the coin, okay? On one hand, <clears throat> there is an element of, if your dopamine levels are blunted, you've lost a bit of that dopamine sensitivity, dopamine levels aren't firing correctly, and you've taken all the sort of the wrong actions, then yes, there is that feeling of feeling depressed where you just do not have that spark. You do not have that motivation. You feel like you're living in a fog. You, life loses its meaning. If a bus drives in front of you, if it hits me, who cares? Aww. But that's like, so that's a real thing. You can literally have that feeling, um, but to climb out of it, um, there are certain steps that you can take. And the idea that, the idea that you were just, you have depression and it's genetic and there's nothing you can do about it, that's just what it is, is wrong. Absolutely, you can change it, you can fix it. And you know, as far as I've seen, it's funny, like people are so quick to jump onto, uh, to jump onto, uh, drugs yes, and to get, get into that stuff. And the research is really not that conclusive on it. it. If you dig into it, just simply working out does more than jumping on antidepressants. Um, so 
I, it's funny. Like I see a lot of people just go to the doctor. Oh, you know, a doctor told me to do this. The only person that's going to care more about your health is yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think the highest quality of life is to, um, build yourself up strong naturally. And, uh, I understand, like I I've had periods in my life where I actually felt that depression and it lingered for a while, but there's certain things that I had to change to get out of it. Like what? Um, so for one, I was during the pandemic, right? I, uh, I was in, this is also why I'm happy to be in Florida, but I was in Canada and we were in lockdown for like, it felt like forever. It was like two or three years lockdown. That oh, was, it was two or three years. Two or three <laughs> really was. years where restaurants were closed, gyms were closed. You couldn't even have people over. Okay, well, I mean, I it's can okay. have whoever I want over, okay? <laughs> yeah. Okay, but you were not supposed to have yeah, people over. But we do what we want. I'm not paying 50% yeah. tax and not having someone over. Preach, um, tell them. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, life was very, very dark. And human beings, there was absolutely no way we're wired to be in an apartment day in, day out for months and months on end. Um, and so at one point I was working very hard and I was just kind of, I was on my phone so much, right? I was on my phone. Uh, social media and stuff like that. And I just kind of was wired. I wasn't sleeping well. I started taking edibles, I started oh, taking, wow. yeah, uh, weed edibles every night just to kind of shut off. That was sort of became a bit of my crutch during the pandemic. And at first I was sleeping and at first I felt fine. And then slowly over the course of several weeks, if not several months, just kind of felt like I felt different, right? Mm. Felt a little bit of, uh, felt a little bit like less sort of excitement. Um, less like, you know, fulfillment, less drive, less passion, less spark, less je ne sais quoi. <laughs> and then, you know, and then, uh, less creativity too. I felt way less creative, uh, way less driven. And then slowly, like it just got worse and worse and worse and worse where I just like life lost its meaning. And it's interesting because were you still working out at the time? I was working out. I was working out hundred percent. I was eating well, I was running my business. I was doing certain productive things. I was also kind of a bit isolated. I wasn't in the sun in Miami, you know, I wasn't outside that much, but I was definitely taking good steps. Um, but it's interesting is because for the last several years, marijuana has been touted as this great thing, legalized marijuana. Okay. You know what? I think like, if you want to do it, that's your choice. Um, but the idea that marijuana is like all good, not bad is wrong. Um, and a lot of times the very thing you go to weed for, whether it's anxiety, whether it's bad sleep, whether it's stress becomes exacerbated. So at first it helps. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden the same issue becomes worse and worse and worse and worse. And you know, not a lot of people talk about this, but marijuana absolutely blunts your dopamine system where you become less sensitive to dopamine and you get less increases in dopamine. And one of the signs of having incredible mental health. And one of the signs of very, very successful people, the reason they're able to work so damn hard is their dopamine system is firing correctly. Mm -hmm. And when you become a stoner, you're just hitting weed weekly, it, uh, it erodes that system and your ability to be hyper incentivized to work very, very hard. That work reward pathway gets broken down. And when that's broken down, it's so much harder to become successful and so much harder to become happy. That's why if you do like a little bit of a dopamine reset, you know, I remember when I was- How do you do that? Well. Well, here's one little simple example. When I was like 11 years old, I went to a summer camp for a month and it was like, we're in cabins, did canoe trips and tents. And, uh, you know, we didn't have any technology for a very long time and it was fun. You know, it was fun. And then I remember like one day we got to eat like freaking corn pop cereal and watch, uh, Austin powers. I've never that, had more like fun <laughs> watching a movie and eating wow. corn pops in my life than after like, 20 days of like being in a canoe and camping, no technology. And so that's like a simple extreme example. Um, but what I recommend people do is like, is try and limit those certain things, whether it's watching a TV show or movies, mm. um, whether it's checking your social media, try and the more time you can spend truly being present, the better control like you have. And, and then the better experiences you will have with dopamine. So, if you're waking up, like checking your social media, then checking every two minutes and then posting something and checking, checking nonstop, you're kind of setting your day in a bad standard. It's harder to get fulfillment from like real stuff. This is also sort of the catch 22 with the world we live in. All the technology we have is very, very productive and it has mm -hmm. great utility, but it also can strip away fulfillment from life if you're not careful. Yeah.
No, I totally agree with you. I hate yeah. social media. I like hate I hate it. it. Even though I use it to work and whatever, I hate it. But um, I agree with you with marijuana. I also hate that because mm. I feel like something which I think is like my um, my superpower or whatever, is like how fast my brain can go. Like it can go so fast. It could do a million things. I could think a hundred million things at once and it can go super fast. But marijuana, it just like sends me to sleep. It sends you to sleep and it, it just, it, it, it cripples into like, it has a rippling effect where it's not just like this little transient effect. It ripples across the next day, the yeah. next day. Yeah, it does. And yeah. it's like, as a man, it's, it's these little mm. moves can send you in an upward spiral or a downward spiral. Right. You start to use marijuana to sleep well, to relax. And then, you know, the next day you're a bit tired. You lost your spark. You don't have the same creativity. So you didn't come up with that awesome idea. You don't have the same drive. And then days go past and you're just, you're, you're not noticing this downfall, mm -hmm. which is, and here's the thing is that Sometimes the worst thing in life isn't something that's just clear cut, inherently bad. It's something that we kind of think is helping us, but over time it just erodes us because it's much harder to catch. It took me a long time to actually put the pieces together and be like, holy shit. The reason mm -hmm. I'm feeling absolutely depressed is because of like one of the big reasons is, is this little edible I'm taking at night. I'm not taking it to be high. I'm taking it at 11 PM. So I fall asleep in an hour or two and then, you know, and then just get back on my grind. Um, and so the very, very empowering thing, um, for the men listening right now is that there's sort of two things to look at if you're looking at mental health and, and, and working through depression, right? So on one thing, you want to live your life in a way that's going to, uh, support your dopamine system. Okay. And that means exercise means proper nutrition, right? It also means, um, being very, you know, cognizant, like, you know, meditation is one of the best things you can do. Even doing a, uh, you know, even a sh cold shower in the morning can be very helpful for that. Um, you know, using, you know, technology and social media as a tool, not letting it use you, not checking it chronically. The amount of teenagers and 20 year olds that scroll through TikTok for two, three hours, four hours straight is insane. It's in, it's nuts. Yeah, it's like, crazy. I don't like, no wonder you're depressed. Yeah. You're smoking weed at night. You're scrolling through TikTok uh. for three, four hours. Like this is my, this is really my, my question to people. It's that of course you're depressed. Yeah. Why wouldn't you be? You're on social media for hours a day. If you were an alien, and you know, looking down on human beings, you'd be like, of course, like what are they doing? They're staring mm -hmm. at a piece of plastic for five hours a day. They're not interacting with each other. Then and then, you know, alcohol, weed is all depressant. It's it it can definitely affect your mental health if you if you, you know, weed, especially if you use it on a weekly basis. Um, so there's all these different things that can crumble your dopamine system. Um, so that that's one hand. Now the second hand is that you have to build a life and become the person that like you have to build an inspiring life and build yourself as a great person that, that is, that, you know, you value, if you are not happy with your life, the situation you live in and the person you are, that is, you're probably gonna be depressed. Mm. Depression isn't inherently a bad thing. Nothing is inherently a bad thing. Um, I actually believe that feeling depressed is feedback that your body is giving you, telling you that you're not living up to your highest values. If you were not depressed, that would be bad. If I spent five hours a day scrolling TikTok mindlessly and smoking weed and drinking and doing nothing with my day, if I did not feel depressed, that would be very, very bad because now I'd, I'd continue going down that road. So you actually don't want to like freak, oh, I'm depressed and this is horrible, horrible thing. No, this is a sign that the way you're living your life is not in accordance with your highest values. And then certain behaviors you're doing are, are blunting and disrupting your dopamine system. So when you move those out of the way where your dopamine system can fire correctly, and then when you start to set real goals toward and, and work towards goals that you actually care about, look, we all have different values, right? Some per, Someone might never care about making millions of dollars a year, but for them, they wanna do some cool traveling, maybe even do the canoe trips. They wanna do, if you live according to your highest values and you take care of like your, yourself, you will feel very, very good. I haven't met anyone that actually started to take real action and do these steps and that was like, no, I still feel depressed. Mm. <laughs> I haven't seen it. So this leads me on to my next topic, which is freedom of speech, right? Yeah. And I know you've been sort of like towing that line a little bit. Um, and the reason why I feel this is connected is because what you're saying is really amazing. Like it's really useful information. And you know, you go to a doctor and they just give you pills, right? Like they don't, they don't want to actually help you. Um, and I've noticed that a lot of content right now is being shadow banned. Um, mm. Have you felt that any of your content has been restricted in any way, censored, shadow well, banned? Uh, uh, 
the main thing that definitely uh, will get restricted is anything around um, the pandemic kind of thing, mm. that stuff. So that absolutely restricted. Um, everything else that I've said so far has been pretty, it's pretty open sesame. Um, because I've noticed that a lot of self, um, a lot of male self-improvement content is being taken down. So I wanna get your thoughts on that. Yeah, I think I've been doing content for a very, very long time since I was 19 years old. I, I I've have so many years and years of, of content that um, I feel like there's a little bit of a uh, wiggle room mm. for me. And, uh, but I've been okay as far as, as far as that. Um, but absolutely there's certain things I could talk about that definitely uh, wouldn't, wouldn't uh, stay online too long. Like, what do you want to talk about that you can't talk about? I, you know, if you, anyone watches my stories, they'll see see firsthand that like my thoughts on on the lockdown, my mm -hmm. thoughts on on some of these things. Um, you know, I, I, it was a, we were living in a Truman show. It was ridiculous for the two years. It was the rules. You know, you walk into a restaurant, you gotta put your mask on, you sit down, you take it off. Yeah. Like, it was insane. Um, and you know, the funny part was just how willing people were just to, to, to comply. Very few people were like, this is fucking so dumb. This is the stupidest thing ever. And then funny enough in Canada, for example, there isn't as much of a connection, a deep, hard connection to freedom and keeping the government in check. Yeah. In Canada, there's more of this blind trust. Why would the government do anything why would they do that? Why would they want to, you know, restrict our free, you know, they're just looking out for us. There's this blind trust in the government that by and large Canadians have, obviously not all of them have because there were some very, very strong men that stood up against it. So we do in Canada. The truckers, the tr yeah, we love him. Yeah, we do have some very strong men that actually see different, but by and large, you know, Canadians do not have this strong sense of, um, of freedom. Um, and that's also why, like, for example, like someone like Jordan Peterson really skyrocketed, skyrocketed, um, years and years ago when he was, uh, when mm. he was wholeheartedly against one of these different bills that they were trying to pass that would. The transgender bill. Yeah. It was compelled speech where you have to use certain speech by law, um, like literally by law. So, so, uh, yeah. Canadians need to understand something very, very simple. History repeats itself. And when, you know, people want to have, they have too much power, like things can get very, very bad. You do never want to give someone unlimited power, too much power. Um, and that's also, that's also what we saw, you know, right? You know, cause things can happen slowly. They don't just go all out day one. They push the line, they reel it back in, they push. There's a certain process to take away your freedom. Um, and that's why like, you know, at first like, oh, don't worry, it's a little bit of a lockdown. No one thought we'd be wearing masks for two years. It didn't cross anyone's mind. And the then, smart people it did. Yeah, yeah. The smart people saw it coming. Yeah. And then it just, it just kind of one little thing. Okay, fine, just two weeks. They make you let up a little bit, mm -hmm. okay? And then, and then you agree, you kind of acquiesce, you reluctantly agree, and then it's a bit more, and then it's a bit more. And then if, you, if they were to tell you what they're gonna do day one, you would have been like, fuck no but they slowly reel you in. It's a very manipulative tactic. Um, and so Canadians must understand if you had your eyes open and you weren't living in a cave that you, we need to keep the government absolutely in check. British people are the same. We yeah. don't we don't have that freedom spirit that the Americans have. Um, but it's interesting because when, when you were speaking about it, I can tell you're like a little bit uncomfortable to say certain things. Like at the beginning, you're like, oh, what's she gonna ask me? Oh no, do I, am I gonna say I, this? I'm gonna say I, trust me, I, I no, I, I thousand percent. It is very- No, you, you that, stand by uh, it, but, the, you, but, the, it, but yeah, the idea that you can just say anything unfiltered I it's want very that. hard to do these days. Yeah. Well, I want that. Yeah. Like, I want to live in a world where we can say anything online. And I, I mean online, because online really is where you can't actually say things. Like, you'll get... Mm -hmm. Like, I had a, I had a, a podcast taken down. I was talking about, um, yes, the, the plan-demic. I always try and mm -hmm. use, like, fancy words like jib-jab. Yeah, well, yeah. Imangadji came up with jib-jab and 11.9 and all that. You know what, though? I know my followers very well, because I do stories. Yeah. And I, I, can, I can read stuff. They freaking love it when I push the limits. 
they want it more. They like, like they are into it. That's good because that's that's what I want, and I know my followers love it too. And you know, I want to live in a world where we can say what we want to say. And but the thing that I'm noticing is nobody's pushing for this. The only the only um, project or if, if you want to call it a project that I know creating sort of like a platform that allows us to speak freely is called Tommy net. Have you heard of them? No, no. So they're creating like this decentralized internet where anyone in the world can basically say, can access the internet. And I know that in China and North Korea, there's so much, um, there's so much um, like government restriction, like they can't access the internet. So would you like to talk more about these sorts of things? And would you like to reach a greater audience, you know, like people in China and mm -hmm. like people in North Korea and actually say whatever you want to say? Yes, absolutely. Um, now there is a little bit of a blessing in disguise because it's harder to speak with absolute like unstifled. Um, if you are willing to push the limit and be say things most people aren't willing to say, it's a lot easier to garner an audience. Yes, that's very true. Because people are literally just, they're waiting for someone to say yeah, like what they feel. They're just pleased. So if you can kind of push the envelope and and be brave and just freaking, you know, I'm just going to say it, then people respect that so much. And also if you're the kind of person that's tiptoeing and, oh, you know, you know, going with whatever the matrix is, as, yeah, yeah. as, you know, as it's called now, <laughs> uh, credit where credit's due. Yeah. Uh, but for the people that are just buckling under the matrix, like, you know, little pussies, then you lose respect. Mm -hmm. And we're seeing that with Logan Paul, right? Yes. He's losing a lot of freaking respect yeah. because he is buckled under the matrix and he's like, always doesn't want to upset, you know, the big hand. And, uh, you know, he's turning his comments off videos, you know? So unbelievable. So it's, it's, it's a double edged sword, even though the landscape is not good right now, if you're willing to have some balls, yeah, you but, can but garner. You get censored, though. You get censored. Yeah, I know. That's the that's the that's the tough part. You do get censored, but if you can toe the line, but you know what? I do think, by and large, I think right now there's a bit of a shift. Things are shifting in a new direction, um, and because you know, it's funny is that like a couple of years ago, it didn't seem like there there was a, as many voices mm. saying this stuff as there are now. Well, I feel like people like Elon Musk are really helpful. Yeah. So Elon Musk, obviously, you know, CEO of Twitter. I'm on Twitter and I'm there. Like, as soon as he took over, I'm there like crazy. Like, it was fake. It was bad for you. You know, all this stuff. Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, I'm going crazy. You okay. haven't seen it? Okay, sweet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm I like... Got, you know what? I, Twitter... You gotta I, get on there. I, I gotta get on Twitter. I never use Twitter. I do think, like, I'm very bullish on Twitter with Elon running it. And I think it's gonna be very, very good. And and I think like I'm, I'm, I do a lot of stuff on Instagram. I just don't know if, if Facebook is gonna be like, I think I see more of a positive future for Twitter. So I have to get on Twitter. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. So you're saying- I'm there like, like saying, there's only two genders. Men can't get pregnant. And it's only fine. women get periods. And it's it's so much fun. And you're not, you're not getting canceled. No, when I'm getting death threats. But, okay. the, but here's the problem. Like I love what Elon Musk is doing, but I truly believe, and maybe I'm just being cynical, but I do believe that all humans are, not all humans, most humans are corruptible. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's dangerous to leave our trust in freedom of speech, our trust of freedom of speech in Elon Musk's hands. So mm. that's why I'm obviously, I, I, you know, I, I, my main thing is like crypto. That's why I'm so excited about Web3, things like Tommy Browser, Tommy Net. Like, I just want to see that take off. I got I to gotta talk to you more about this stuff. Later. Well, would you yeah. ever use, would you use a decentralized platform like Tommy Net? Um, yeah. You would? Yeah, I gotta look into this. I haven't even heard of Tommy Net, but. Yeah, it's, it's but, totally decentralized. Anyone yeah. anywhere in the world can access it. Um, there's no there's no CEO, there's no centralized authority. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody can say, oh, that's bad, take it down. I know, because that's the challenge is that, um, you know, many, many people are investing the years and years and years and tons of money building an audience, a brand yeah. on a platform and it gets, and. And without really any clear cut rules or, uh, or instructions, it's getting just pulled for them for really no reason. Yeah. Um, and that is really, really, you know, that's really freaking messed up. Um, and I've, I've seen it happen, you know, I've seen it happen uh, many, many times, even years ago. I've seen, I've seen guys got, get wiped off. Um, but I have never seen more of a strong push yes. on some of these elements. Like I think there is, you know, for every reaction, there's an equal opposite reaction. And yeah. I, I think we're seeing that right now. Um, but again, like it's, it's, it's pretty, pretty, it's pretty still kind of hard to just speak 
all out. Well, one of the topics that you can't talk about, which we're gonna get into now, sure. is men and women. Okay. So I know right. that you talk about stuff yeah. a little bit. Yeah. Um, you're like, yeah, of course I do. Yeah, I know what I'm doing. So let, let, let's hear it. So okay. you talk about you know, how a man should be on a date. You know, okay. what he should wear, what he should do, how he should mm -hmm. behave. So I'm really interested to know, like, what is Greg like on a date? Like, how does Greg behave? And then obviously people can learn from you and take advice from you. Um, yeah, what, what's, Greg's, uh, what's well, Greg like with women? If if you're going on a date as a man with a woman, like, there's certain things that guys do wrong um, that that uh, that is not attractive. Um, so one, you know, the main thing is really to be confident. Obviously, you have to be confident. And what is confidence? Confidence is nothing more than just comforting yourself. Now, if you're going on the first date you've gone on in, in six months, you're going to be nervous. Um, you're going to, it's, it's, you know, it's harder to be confident, but as you, you know, put yourself out there, you start to build that skill set. Um, but the first thing is to really be confident, which is comforting yourself. Um, mm -hmm. and really to lead women. If you talk to any woman, they want someone to lead them. They don't want you to ask them like, Hey, like, would you want to go to dinner sometime, oh, I hate that. you know, or, Hey, where do you want to go to dinner? And a lot of guys don't have strong like role models on like how to actually like what to actually do, but you want to be more like you want to lead. Um, as like, if you're inviting a girl out, you want to like, you know, plan eight, pick you up 8 PM. Perfect. X, Y, and Z. And then, uh, and then on the date, um, you know, I, I, uh, you know, I, it's, it's easier if you ask me a very, very specific question, but, um, the main thing I find is that it's very, very important to not talk about yourself too much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause a lot of guys think they need to impress a girl. They have a beautiful girl on a date and they're like, man, like I really got to get this girl to like me. So like, what are the cool things I can talk about? And they just try and impress her. Oh, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know, reference like this job thing. And, and they're, they're just trying to find all these different beats to impress the girl. And then women are very, very smart and they can pick up on things at a much higher uh, social level yeah, we're and they can see through it. They can see absolutely through it. And so it's better to actually learn about the girl, ask the woman that you're on a date with questions, learn about her. Where is she from? I mean, one of the worst advice, uh, one of the worst pieces of advice in dating uh, is in the, is in the pickup industry, which is don't be the interview guy. Don't ask question, question, question. They tell you not to do that. They tell you not to and do like that. And like the pickup artist yeah. game. Okay. And you're saying I, do that. I'm saying do it. Interview her. I'm, I'm telling you absolutely. If you are <laughs> you interview her, you, why? Because again, like if you're actually a high value man, then you, you don't just see pretty like beautiful girl. Oh my God, she's perfect. That's it. Game over. <laughs> you got to ask her questions and learn about her. Well, that's one reason. But if you don't ask her questions and you end up kind of talking about yourself, telling stories, maybe you even sound charming, maybe even sound cool. Um, sh the whole time she's going to just be like, wow, this guy's just obsessed with himself. He doesn't mm -hmm. know anything about me. And then you start to show her interest. You start to show her interest. Oh, you know, I want to see you again. Or you try and go for a kiss. She's going to be thinking, why even into me? You didn't That's even ask so me true. anything. That is so true. I feel like yeah. he doesn't know anything about me. Why does he like me? Why does he like me? Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then all of a sudden the woman's going to think about reasons why she should not be with you. Yeah. And I'd why. be insulted. Yeah. I'd be insulted. Exactly. Exactly. So as a man, <laughs> what you want to do is just let go of this whole pressure that you have to impress her, that you got to be really, really cool. And, and, uh, because that in and of, in of itself is unattractive. Worry more just about being a little bit more mysterious. And secondly, find out a lot about her. And again, you might be on a date with a girl and after an hour you might be like, we're not gonna get along. At least you know, right? At least you know. Um, but, but you know, more likely you're gonna be like, okay, wow, like she's got some really cool stuff that I really, really like. I really appreciate this about her. And now the connection or your interest in her is gonna be so much more believable and so much more authentic. Um, and, uh, you know, and there's some like, there's some like cool stuff there. But, but again, women are not gonna complain after a date to their friends saying like, he just asked me a bunch of questions. I just talked about myself. No woman has ever said, oh, I had the worst date ever. I just talked about myself the whole time. What they will say is I had the worst date ever. He just talked about himself the whole time. He didn't ask me anything. So 
if you actually want to build a connection, you want to learn about her a lot. And yes, like it will be thrown back on you when you ask her a whole bunch of questions. She's like, oh my God, I, we've talking about me my whole time. What about you? When a girl says that, she is into you. Oh, wow. She is sold. When she's like, we've been talking about me the whole time. Like, what about you? What I about this? Exposed. I feel like I yeah, feel exposed. I've they, said that before. They, they said that before, you know? And even like, if you want to play the game a bit more on a date as a guy, you can kind of in the beginning be a little bit aloof slightly cold you know you meet her shake her hand uh shake her hand. Oh, no sorry 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 you meet her you give her a hug yeah, whatever yeah. sorry you give her a hug you say hi you know nice to meet you, you sit down and then just be a little bit not when i say shake your hand <laughs> hug or whatever um pull like pull hold back a little bit okay a lot of guys they see a girl they're really into really beautiful they're like on a silver platter they're leaving leaning forward oh my god you know and then just they're just like on a silver platter for her. hold it back a little bit and then as she starts to open up, as you ask more questions, as you start to learn more about her, then you can give her a little bit more. And then the woman's gonna feel like more like, wow, she had to, she had to, she had to earn your attention, earn your interest. It wasn't just guaranteed off the start of the date. And then she's gonna, it's gonna feel a lot better. Um, and then again, as a man, like the number one thing you have to use, right, is your attention. So if you're on a date. And attention, you your, said? your attention. Attention. If we're on a date, okay, and you know we're chatting, I'm asking you a question, then you got your phone, you're checking your phone right here, you're being a little bit off. The last thing I'm gonna do is be like, just talking while you're. I would never ever no, talk while no, you're on your no, phone. No, no, no. Okay, cool. So what about that? I just I would sit back and I would just wait for you to kind of realize. Well, I do that with friends anyway. If if, if I, yeah, because I find it really disrespectful. So yeah. if like if you're if someone's like talking to me and they're on their phone, I'm gonna wait until they're done. Right, right. And then I'll, yeah. No, it's smart. And the other thing for men to understand is that, that women can be very, very different. Certain women like different things, right? Um, and so if you make the wrong move, like one move, a one woman might love it, Laura, and then Jennifer doesn't like Give it. Give me an example. Um, okay, let's say, for example, like if like some women are more down to hook up sooner and some women need a bit more time, a okay. bit more investment, right? Um, and so if you can understand more and more about a girl and, and, uh, and learn about her, you can understand sort of her blueprint and then, you know, what she's going to respond the best to, you know, what about, um, what a man should wear? Okay. Let's see. Um, yeah, very, I think for a first date, um, be very, very simple, right? Um, nice, dark jeans. Now it's less about like really fitted tighter jeans, more about like more medium fitted jeans. Um, I like I to wear yeah, dark jeans, uh, boots, and a well-fitting t-shirt. That's it, like simple is fine. I mean, you can wear, a, if it's a nicer place, you can wear a button down shirt. But I think for men, the key with fashion for men is simply having uniforms. Mm -hmm. For different settings, you wanna have different uniforms. So, um, for the gym, you know, simple, you know, joggers, t-shirt, etc. For your work, you got your work outfit. The idea that you have to have all these different outfits and different clothes, I'm gonna mix this up is like wrong. And your masculine energy is more of a consistent thing. You know, if you look at uh, Elon Musk, you look at some of these different guys, they kind of wear the same thing. Mm -hmm. If you watch the show called Californication, Hank Moody, he wears blue jeans and a black t-shirt. Like it's, he's got a daily uniform, Vincent Chase, like same thing, daily uniform. You just want to find sort of your daily uniform. And then that frees up so much time. Mm. Yeah, do, I think. Do you agree? Yeah, I think I think dark jeans and a black t-shirt, done. Dark, dark jeans and a black t-shirt and let your personality, let your V shape Yeah, speak it's about for, the physique. Let your physique speak for itself. Um, and let the woman have fun dressing up and, and having more variety. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. And I think behavior is, is like so important. Like yeah. you're right, leading, um, and women, we don't mean to like shit test, but like we will, well, I personally will just like pause and watch him navigate and see if he can navigate. You see what I mean? Right. Does yes. that make sense? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. yes. Cause like I'm very, I'm like a very competent person. Um, but like in, in that kind of scenario, I'm like, no, no, I'm, I'm very like laid back. I, you know, I'm, I'm very submissive. You wanna be in your feminine and you yeah. wanna make sure that that guy can allow you to stay in your feminine. So I'm watching, so yeah. I'm watching him navigate and I'm seeing how he handles and, things. And that's the thing is that most women are gonna be their happiest when they're able to, especially on a date or with a romantic partner or potential suitor, they're gonna be happiest when they feel like they can just let go and be their feminine. Yeah. When they feel like the guy is like freaking 
if you guys drive, I don't know where to park. Oh, where do I park? Yeah. You know, go, go here. Oh, you know, where should we sit? Or, you know, when the, when the guy isn't like leading strong and certainly and with confidence, uh, then the woman can't be in her feminine. And then she's in, you know, then she has to shift into her masculine. And it's, uh, that's, there is very little chance for attraction and seduction to take place when she can't let go. Yeah, no, that's spot on. Um, and then another really controversial thing, which you're like not allowed to talk about, is um, like the man and the woman's role. You have kind of touched on it a bit, but what's your take? Are men and women equal? You know, should a man be the one who's dealing with all the hassle? Is it good for a woman to just not deal with any of the hassle? She shouldn't be working. She should just be like creating a beautiful home and the kids. Like what's your, what's your take on the gender roles? Got it, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that like, you know, we're all individuals so we can all pick whatever we want to do. Um, ultimately, I think that a lot of times these more roles that were developed and built naturally, because if it was meant to be the other way, it would have been the other way, right? So they, there's a certain bias or tendency for men to fit into certain roles and women to fit into certain roles. Um, but I, I, uh, what's the exact question, by the way? Like, what do I think do about it? Do you believe in traditional gender roles? Do I? I like them. Okay. Yeah, I do. I think that, um, when you get like the most strong connection and you also get like the one plus one is three when you both sort of delegate different tasks right um so for me for example like in a relationship like i want to be in charge of certain things i want to focus on you know building wealth etc cetera, etc cetera. and then uh and then have the woman uh more involved in some of the, the home stuff but the challenge is right the challenge is is that 50 years ago, a man on average could work, the woman could stay at home and they could buy a house, have two cars, pay for groceries, uh, afford to have children. And that is not the case anymore. Yeah. So the challenge right now is that even in like, I, I'm from Toronto, even Toronto, the idea that a even above average man can buy a home, have a wife that stays at home and raise kids is not a thing anymore. It's literally not a thing. You have to make so much freaking money to actually like have a family now. And inflation's become insane. Um, and so it's it's uh, it's like people are, a lot of people are met, like it's, it's a tough position. So my response to that is, um, it's never been easier to be an entrepreneur and make money, right? Got it, got it. The problem is, in, in my opinion, is you're totally right but like the world has evolved, yeah. but we haven't taught anybody this new world. No, like nobody knows how to make money in this new world because like we don't teach it. We're still, we're still Te teaching the blueprint of the fifties and that doesn't work. There's a new blueprint to making money. And this includes making money online from anywhere in the world. And part of this new blueprint for making money online is cryptocurrency. So one blockchain I want to tell you about is Corium because Corium is working to help businesses move into the online crypto space. Corium's layer one blockchain offers secure transactions. It keeps business information safe and also reduces overhead costs for businesses. One feature that allows it to do this is the advanced minting feature. This includes permissioned minting, whitelisting, minting quotas and limits, multi-signature approval, audibility and transparency, among many other things. This allows the business to operate as efficiently as possible. It also helps the business simplify the operations, save money and find new ways to scale. With blockchain and cryptocurrencies increasingly being adopted, it's important that you read up so you don't get left behind. I'll leave more information for you in the description below. Now let's get back to Greg. We're teaching the blueprint of the 50s. It, it's, it's in any case the uh, you know, Pareto principle holds true, it's still gonna be like a subset of men that end up having a That's lot true. of financial power and most men are gonna naturally be disenfranchised. And one of the things, if you go back thousands of years, there, you know what's funny is that a s only a subset of men's genes pass through. Mm -hmm. Most men, their genes were extinguished. Women, most women became mm -hmm. pregnant. So basically a small number of men impregnated a mm -hmm. lot of women, right? And so what someone could argue is that this new landscape where now it's so damn hard to have a family as a man, or even like, you know, two people have to work full time to maybe kind of scrape by and have kids. 
So what's going to happen now? Are men going to start having like three girlfriends? Like rich, the top 10% going to start having three, well, three they girlfriends? Are. And imp- they are. What do you think we're, about we're that? Um, well, I, you know what? It's like, you know, I, I mean, hey, I don't, I don't judge. But um, what do you think? What do you, th- wait, I'll answer. Wait, what do, you, what do you think? Is that something you would do? You know, this whole like high value man, he can have like three wives or he can have his main woman and he can have side women that like she knows about, but as long as she doesn't see, it's fine. Like, is that something you would do? Um, you know, the Andrew Tate lifestyle without get- going to jail. Understood, Um, You know, I don't, I don't know. Okay. You know, uh, yeah, I don't, I know it's, uh, hmm. Like have, one girl and have fun on the side or like have like multiple baby mamas no like get married and have a wife Mm. and then you go on a boys trip right right uh you don't have to think about that one but you know what my my father he had he married my mother he had five kids and a beautiful family and uh and i kind of want to follow in those footsteps and uh you know have kids a uh, woman that I love. Um, I, right now, I got a few little goals to tackle first. So, you know, but, um, but yeah, you know what? It's, uh, it's, 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 I haven't, I haven't like closed the case on that one. So I'll have mm-hmm. to, you know, but again, like that is k- kind of what's happening. Yes. It is what's happening where most men kind of feel a bit disenfranchised and you see, you see the results on, for example, on Tinder and, and, and Bumble and Hinge where, where a small minority of men are getting a lot of the interest. Um, but as a man, the good news is yes, build yourself up. You can freaking build a movie star worthy body. You can start to take action in your life, set goals, build an income. I mean, look, my goal was not to make millions of dollars. My goal was I wanted to make a good income. I get just a nice place, cool car and have freedom and do what I love and, uh, you know, and, and live where I wanted to live. That's also one of the things that I cared about. It's funny. Like I actually saw the matrix when I was 19 years old. Oh, I wow. saw the, I, I saw like, and I also read this book by Tim Ferriss four hour work week, but a lot of these seeds were planted. I saw the path in university to work a job, end up here, you, you work, you end up, if you're lucky, you go up the corporate ladder in your thirties, working all the time and making a somewhat decent income. Um, and so I was like, you know what? I'd rather build something online. I could live where I want to live. I have more freedom and I'm doing what I love. And if I want to turn my computer off one day, the money still comes in. And so that's really what I strove for. And then the more money, was more of a byproduct of just doing what I loved and creating tons of value. It wasn't necessarily my first sort of goal. Well, you've done amazing. Um, Th- you've done incredibly you. well, you. and I'm super excited to see what you do next. Where can people follow all your stuff, You know, see what you're doing, learn from you? You're on YouTube, Instagram. How do people get in touch with you? Yes, um, so I'm very active on Instagram at Grego Gallagher. Um, as well, my website is kinobody.com, K-I-N-O body.com. Uh, Kino actually means movie, movie body. And that's where you can check out my programs and uh, my Kino Mojo. Um, we're actually having, a, we've had a few guys uh, that send in their blood work before and after. We've had guys increase their free testosterone 60%. We had one guy just posted today, which was insane anomaly, more than doubled his free testosterone, which is crazy. But we're seeing tremendous results on it. Um, but that's my stuff. Greg Gallagher on Instagram and kinobody.com. Amazing. Greg, I want to thank you so much for coming on the show. It's been so interesting learning from you um, and hearing your opinion on everything that's that's going on. That was fun to hear and learning from you in terms of dating and fitness and everything. So thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this kind of content, then hit the like button and subscribe and we'll bring so much more to you. We'll see you all next week.